So before we get to the Solana wallet hack, there's something that you should really be thinking about doing right now today, as it is December 31st, 2023, before you roll in 2024. And what that is, is burning those useless NFTs that did you no good. And this was an article that was came out by Blockworks. And I got to tell you, it makes a lot of sense. And I wish I would have done this yesterday. Just got caught up with uh, family events and things like that. So let's just roll into it. Then we'll get into a, the uh, Solana wallet hack, which I got to tell you, if uh, if you're interacting with dApps or anything like that on a hot wallet, stop right now. So let's go for this first. Then we'll get to the hack. So platforms for NFT tax loss harvesting see end of year bump. And the reason for that is because all those different NFTs that you bought, and I don't know if you bought any of them, but most of them are trash. And you can actually do something with that to actually help yourself out. So here's what we got. So weekly NFT trades have been parked between 100,000 and 150K since May after regularly topping half a million in early 2022. Amid the downturn, a slate of platforms have begun to offer tax loss harvesting services for NFT holders. What is that? Well, that is essentially is this. You buy an NFT for $10,000 because you think it's going to be the next big board ape yacht club or something like that. And then it goes to the floor price of a dollar. So what you could do, instead of holding on to that and going, yeah, it's going to come back, which it could. I can't give you financial advice, whatever you want to do. But what you could do is you could sell that and you could say, hey, I now have a loss of $9,999 and claim that on your taxes moving forward. But the thing is, if you want to have that done, you got to do it today. And that's why we're talking about that absolutely right now. So there are sites that charge a small fee to purchase NFTs that have lost their value and are difficult to sell because if one thing went from 10,000 to a dollar, no one's buying that junk. Unsellable is one such, such solution. That is the name of the website. It was launched uh, the company in 2022 after the founders, Skylar Hallgreen, David Sawyer, and Zach Miller were frustrated that some of their NFT investments were essentially illiquid because no one would buy them. Unsellable charges roughly $2 an ether plus the price of gas to acquire a collector's NFTs. That's the rub right there. And as of Wednesday, today is Sunday, the platform is purchasing a thousand NFTs on average over the prior few days and was approaching 10,000 purchases in December alone. He added that Unsellable bought between zero and 10 NFTs most day in August. Look, I'm not here to judge anybody. I've done the same thing. We purchased some, some goofy stuff and it didn't really work out. Now's your, your chance to make amends. I'm just kind of bringing this to your attention so you can actually do the right thing that could be best for you. And they state, we recognize that most investors think about tax loss harvesting only in December, with most only getting around to it between December 29th and 31st. That's today. While almost all traditional investors execute tax loss harvesting strategies, this new generation of Web3 investors is just starting to learn how to be tax savvy with their crypto and NFT investments. And again, it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep. And this is just one of those different things you can do to actually increase the revenue or your take home status as opposed to paying a boatload of taxes. And there was also a piece in that article, which I didn't really touch on, but there's another thing that you can use, which is Soul Incinerator. In Soul Incinerator, I had found this uh, a couple of weeks ago. You can actually send your Solana NFTs to it. They will burn it for you. And then also you get a little bit of Solana in return. Now, as you do this, remember, you can also do this and claim a tax loss harvest. Now, you're going to be able to, you're going to have to actually record this in some way, either on a spreadsheet or something that you could use as far as like an online process. But you can do something like Soul Incinerator, send your Solana only NFTs. They will pay you a little bit of Solana. And you can also use it as a uh, tax harvesting process. And then also, uh, here's the actual website. I will link that in the description. This is just one of many. And as a reminder, uh, if you're going to use your taxes, this is Coin Ledger. This is the one that I personally use. I've used them for two years straight. I will continue to use them. I'm going to use this this year as well. And they actually offer that service here uh, on Coin Ledger itself. Now, for me, the big thing is that I think what will help you out a lot is they're doing a portfolio tracker, which is 100% free, and uh, you can join the wait list. I've already got the chance to look at it. It's really slick. 
You just input all your information. It tells you your profits, your loss, if it's going to be short term or long term. If you actually uh, uh, sell it on a, on a particular day, you're actually able to drill in and see where like all your different cryptos are actually at if you have a lot of different accounts. And it's again, it's free. And then you're going to be able to roll that into your taxes to make things a lot simple. And then if you're like me and you're like, you know what, I need a little bit of help because you know there's a lot of things in here that I don't really know. On the very bottom, there's a link that says, find a crypto tax expert. If you click on that, they actually have CPAs that you can work with, and they're gonna help you out with all your questions like, hey, all these different airdrops, are those taxed? Or, hey, I was uh, actually staking this now, how much do I get taxed for that? And how does this all work? This is where you probably wanna take a look at a CPA. And then finally, I will just say this, uh, if you wanna get started, it's free. Now, if you wanna generate a report, uh, that costs money and it's between 49 and 200 bucks. But I'm telling you right now, peace of mind is worth it. So that is the whole piece for the NFTs. And then just to get back to the story itself, this is the unsellable collection, the first website that we took a look at. And as I scroll down through this, I will just say, look at these ridiculous pieces of art, which of course people look at this and go, you know what? This is going to be millions because look at some of the other things that are out there. They're ridiculously goofy, but yet some sell for like 20 Ethereum, 100 Ethereum or whatever else. So if you see one of yours in here, don't feel bad. It happens to the best of us. Some of our investments just don't work out. And that's the long and the short of it. I don't want to go through all of these because uh, they have a collection of 28,946 items. So just know that there's a lot of goofy stuff out there and crypto and digital assets and any investments is extremely risky. And when you get into this, just know that not everything's gonna work out. Now, having said that, I will say, as a reminder, this is a website called Crypto Slam. If you take a look at NFT collection rankings by sales volume, look at this. You know what the number one is? I thought it was Board Ape Yacht Clubs or CryptoPunks or other Azuki, stuff like that. But no, it's Axie Infinity. And the sales have been 4,255,307,804 in dollar amounts. That is a boatload of money. Why is that? It's because it was a play to earn. People want to use the NFTs. I know, I understand the whole process. You say, well, you know, it's, uh, it didn't really do too well, but it's making a comeback. It's on Ronin. Also uh, another great game called Pixels is on there as well. But you're going to see that some of these are still going strong and there's a very few owners. And again, the exclusivity of what's happening. So you can take a look at that. But the question you might have is, well, how can I, you know, what's the next thing? Well, look, as far as games go, that's always been my narrative. I always thought this year it was going to be, as far as the bull run comes comes in, of course, it'll be Bitcoin, of course, it'll be L1s. But I think the, the, the next piece will be DEXs, it'll be AI, and it'll be Web3 Gaming. And I've got a great website. It's free. I'm just saying, you can, you can, you can sign up for it. I don't even charge anything. I just your email, and I only email you when I have something new that I put up. But I've taken a look at the best and brightest minds in the space. This is Yatsu. He's from Animoca Brands, and he pretty much lays it out what Web3 is. I had Johnny Hustle from Banter. I had Stash. I had Kagi. I had Jesus Martinez on. And they pretty much just say, like, these are the next big games and, and what uh, actually it could be. And there's a lot of good information to, to glean from that. But one of the things that I took from all of these people was that some people like pretty intense games, and they love it, and some people just kind of get into like the casual stuff like me. This is from Statista, and I've shown this many a times, but don't sleep on gaming because number of gamers in 2015 was 2.03 billion. You know what it's gonna be, what it was this year? 3.22 billion, and it's, and it's expected to actually increase to 3.3 billion. And then if we break it down by age group, if you're in typically on my channel, I skew a little bit older, shocker, but uh, you might say to yourself, well, I don't, play games. What the heck is this guy talking about? Well, it's not just about us, the 55 to 64 year olds, 9%. But as you get younger, kids like to play games. Who'd, who'd have thunk it? And then of course, here's the reasons for playing. This is my big reason. Actually, number two is my big reason, which is fill time while taking a break, wedding or commuting. Number one reason, unwind, relax, and decompress. So if you're just sitting here going, I'd never play games. Look, I actually help you. Maybe you're not so, be so uptight. And then lastly, this is the whole thing that about what I was getting to. A lot of these games, so some of these games are, are pretty intense and they take a little bit of uh, time to actually learn, but I just, I'm like a casual gamer, just click a button, zone out a little bit, relax, and my brain turn off and just kind of go from there. Casual games is the number one sector 
where people want to play. And that's 1.95 billion action shooter racing. They're great. I mean, if you want to do that stuff, but that's where I think the big next investment is going to be is into casual gaming because so many people actually do it and there's money to be made there. So having said all that, I want to introduce you to a second game. Now I've already talked about Benji Bananas, super easy game to play. It's ready to play right now. It's on Android and Apple. And then this is uh, Geno Pets. And it's a, it's a pretty, it's a super basic game. It's built on Solana. Before anybody asks, I, no one paid me for this, but I did talk to the team just to see exactly how this worked out because I needed to get an actual, actual code to play it. And I'm glad I did. You can play it right now. It's available again on Android and Apple. It's super simple to use. And here's the whole mission. I kind of like this because this kind of goes along with what uh, that sweat coin I was always talking about. So the mission is to be uh, act, making active more fun and rewarding. It's a digital accountability buddy designed to reward you for parking at the back of the parking lot or just actually walking. So essentially what it is, you download this game, you do some steps, you bank your steps, you play with the pet, you actually can play these little mini games inside the game itself, and of course you level up. That's it, it's very simple. And uh, I linked this in the description. Here's the game, ready to play, I'm doing it right now. You're gonna need a code though, because I had to get a code myself. But thankfully, I talked to the guys and they said, hey, I created you a custom invite code, it's just digital. So when you download the game, it's gonna say, sorry, uh, this isn't available unless you have a code, just use digital, links in the description, and you can actually start playing the game. And before we go on to the Solana hack, the Solana wallet hack, I should say, no one freak out. But this isn't some flash in the pan game. If we take a look at all the games on Solana right now, which they are kind of building, it's not like it's uh, on Ethereum or Polygon or something like that, or Ronin, uh, but they are number two, and they're very close to Star Atlas as far as unique active wallets. Star Atlas has 5.2, Juno Pets is 4.5. So this isn't some wacky, crazy game that I just came up with. This is a game that's been around for a little bit of time and is actually doing the right things and has a lot of people into it. So having said all that, we're gonna step into the next section with a little bit of tiptoeedness. So with Geno Pets, you can connect your wallet and you can do that, that's fine. However, there was this tweet that came out that said a Solana wallet user lost all his funds today. It was a malware keylogger installed from a Web3 crypto game. Here's the thing. This is why we can't have nice stuff. There's always gonna be hackers. It's just how it is. Not all centralized exchanges are here to screw you over. Not all L1s are a rug pull. Not all NFTs are absolute trash and garbage. Not all investments are awful. However, you gotta be doing your due diligence and it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep. So when I saw this, I'm like, okay, what is it now? Let me prepare myself. So this was the tweet itself. This is from Guy, whatever. He says, I was drained of everything this morning. Four wallets, my main, two burners, and my bonk bot trading wallet all gone. All NFTs, all coins, even all the rugs and shitters completely wiped. Everything I've worked hard for in a degen for since 2021, gone in seconds. I've seen this happen many times in the space. I've always practiced safe habits, so this would never happen to me. Eventually, it did though, and I was wrecked mentally and emotionally this morning and throughout the day while being at my in real life job. So what happened, you may ask? Because this is a Solana piece here. If he's talking about bonk bot, and that's only on Solana. Ultimately, I came to find out it was some sort of malware or keylogger maliciously installed on my laptop from a Web3 game called Swift Down. I looked for Swift Down everywhere. Apparently it's yanked already. I don't know what the heck this thing is or where this guy got it from. But again, if you wanna go into the, to the sewers and down there and like say, hey, this is the new greatest thing, and I'm gonna try it because it's gonna make me a lot of money. Just know that the farther down you go, the more risk that you take. And that's just the truth of it. And next to last, they took a look at uh, some on-chain analysis and they said, hey, here's, here's my, uh, my new wallet. And Dan says, created, created wallet with, that's why it got drained. People need to stop creating wallets with their browser. Instead, you should link your hardware wallet. Base model ledger is only $100. My friend's malware from controlling Phantom. So what it looks like to me is this was a Phantom wallet hack because of malicious malware from whatever that stupid game was. And this guy made multiple 
accounts within his phantom hot wallet, which is browser based. Also, it can be on your phone as well. So the thing I was thinking was, was this is like, okay, what does that mean? First, very simple. If you're going to use a hot wallet, just know that all that money in there is probably gone. And if you want to do something else, create a brand new wallet. And even if you create four different wallets, like this guy did with his phantom wallet, one interaction with an app can drain it. So does that mean that we should just use a ledger and connect it and we're safe? No. Check this out. Because as Dan was talking about this, he said, you should link your hardware wallet, which would be a ledger. But might I remind you, just two weeks ago, Ledger had a hack itself from interacting with Dapp because one of their former employees left their GitHub account get hacked and, an in, and an introduced some type of malware and people who were associating their Dapps with their Ledger got hacked. What does this mean? This means, again, this is why we can't have nice stuff. There's scammers everywhere. It's just the truth. So if you're going to play around with this, just know that you're probably going to lose a lot of things. You're going to lose everything. And it doesn't mean that every single game out there is malware and awful. No. Just saying be careful. Follow some basic principles. If you're using a hot storage or a hot wallet, just know it's already gone. So don't, need, 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 don't leave too many things in there and go from there. If you're going to use a cold storage device, might I recommend one that's right below me? <sighs> it's called a tangent. It works out pretty well. Links in the description. But that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. I want to say that tomorrow is a new day. We go into 2024. This has been a tremendous year. And I think this is only the beginning. But we must stay vigilant moving forward. So everybody, thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. Again, like and subscribe. And I will see you in the new year.